Welcome back to the Tank Me Later podcast, which is part of Fantasy Basketball International and brought to you by Fantrax for this one. This is going to be part one of probably just two uh, about my updated dynasty rankings for December of 2023. So let's go ahead and get into it. Right. And as I said, this is going to be the first episode, uh, just kind of going through my updated dynasty rankings. Um, so just before we get into actually what those look like, um, just going to say like what this episode is going to consist of. So um, initially I put out a tweet saying, hey, would people rather have updated dynasty rankings like a top 300 or top 30 rookies to like keep an eye on for dynasty Um and got more votes. It was like 100 something votes total, about 60 something percent uh, in favor of rankings. So I was like, cool, top 300. And then I was like, I guess kind of got ambitious, got ahead of myself, and was like, you know what? Why do a top 300 when I can just rank everybody that's currently on an NBA roster? Because, you know, that's what other people do. Top 300 is probably better, but I wanted to be a sicko like Matt Lawson. Just wanted to do it. And, uh, when those are done, it will hopefully be, or not hopefully, it will be published somewhere. Um, haven't decided where yet, or like kind of tried to figure out where, but it will be published um, in a written form that you can look at. Um, but for this, since I'm still working on those, I'll go through actually really quickly. Um, so something else I want to do is like kind of the process I'm taking, which is new uh, for this time, because normally it would just be kind of like, looking at players and like ranking them and using obviously where they are um, in nine cat rankings, their age, their situation, like factors that you consider for dynasty uh, to rank them. It was just kind of like a list. And now I'm trying something new where I'm going through uh, by each team ranking on those teams. And now I'm currently going through by position and ranking within each position and then turning that into um an overall ranking so that one like just kind of helps me uh, make sure I'm not missing anybody if I'm just going through by each team and then taking from that list and then kind of makes it easier. I think to uh, make it into an actual rankings list because then I have like, once I have it from teams to positions and then positions to an overall ranking, it's like I have my point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward center, um, and then it's just kind of me drafting, like which one would I take next? And it should be relatively close to in order. Um, and then just kind of filing them together. Cause I feel like, I mean, not as much as you would say in like fantasy football, but I would say that you could, it's easier to distinguish who you'd prefer by position than by uh, just overall. Like it's just easier, like point guards that are doing the same things are easier to kind of rank than centers whose stat set is entirely different. And obviously, you know, league scoring, league format, lineups, all these things impact how an individual player should be ranked in your league. But it's just general value um, in dynasty formats. I think you can, like, there are other formats or other ways to rank players such as a rebuild or retool or contending um you can do it like that i those are great um i think that ends up being more work so maybe i'll do that one day but i'm not doing that this time um this is again general value so like how the average manager should value these players in dynasty leagues um whether they're rebuilding or contending or to, to me like retooling isn't really a thing like, I get it. I get what it is. It's just not something I've ever considered doing. To me, it's like I want to either win the championship or have the number one overall pick. That's just how I play Dynasty Leagues. Um, but I understand the concept of retooling, um, and I just feel like also making rankings, so that's kind of difficult. But rebuilding and, and win now are obviously easier. Um, anyways, so this is just going to be general value. Um, your team direction should impact – 
how you value these players, but this is just kind of like, okay, this player is going to like be able to help me win for three seasons. And then they're probably too old versus, Oh, this player may take one or two more seasons to help me win. And they may not ever be as good as this other player, but they're going to play 10 more years. So how's that valued in as well? So there's not a specific exact science to it, but this is just kind of how I would interpret what that looks like. Um, it's not a numbers based projection. Uh, this is just like my personal rankings. I have ranked these players. I'm not using a model. I'm not using, uh, any, like I'm using numbers, but I'm not using numbers to try that rank these players specifically how they are. It's just more of like not opinion based, but kind of like an opinion, you know? Uh, it's so that's just where I'm at with these. Anyways, so as I said, I'm still going through by position currently, but I have a good bit um, of that done. So hopefully those rankings will actually be fully done soon. But I wanted to have an episode for this week. Um, might be iffy on getting one out next week just because I'll, I'll be traveling for the holidays. Uh, but if I'm not able to get an episode out, I will try and get these rankings out. And then the following week have an episode. Um or if it ends up getting just way too busy with the holidays, then by the following week, so like by the end of 2023, or I guess a couple of days before that, I should have updated Dynasty rankings and the part two of this, uh, which won't actually go through every single player the way I'm going to with this one, um, because that would be, I don't even know how many players to rank uh, and talk about, and that's just not worth anybody's time. Um, but it will be probably like risers, fallers, guys I'm excited about, guys I think that will rise or fall in the future, um, guys that I'm higher on or lower on than other people, those kinds of highlights. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get into this first episode. And unlike last week, I took the time and remembered to make a slideshow this time. So you can follow along with different names. And what I've done is... I was going to do top 25 and then five players that just missed out, but I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just do a top 30. It's the same thing, but it was just five more players that I was pretty confident in where they're ranked. Um, while this is subject to change, I feel pretty confident in where these guys are. Um, and I have an explanation for everybody and like why they either uh, rose or dropped um, in comparison to my dynasty rankings from September, 2023. Uh, which were part of the uh, Roto World Draft Guide. I think only ended up making the top 200 made it on there um, just because of the way that the uh, system is set up to post it. It only included the top 200 despite me uploading a top 300. Um, so that's where these comparisons are coming from. Uh, nobody in today's episode is ranked outside or was ranked outside the top 200 uh, for like in the past. Uh, or in my dynasty rankings from three months ago. Um, but we'll go ahead and go into it, and it'll be five per slide. So this is players ranked 30th through 26th. Um, 30th, we have Demona Sabonis, 29th, Lowry Markinen, 28th, Carl Anthony Towns, 27th, Desmond Bain, and 26th, Scoot Henderson. Um, so really for me, uh, so... It also shows how far they've dropped. So Sabonis dropped four spots. And to me, it's it's not anything bad. I think it's more so that other players have just kind of broken out a bit and improved, which kind of, I mean, there's a few guys that leaped up a good bit, which we'll get into um, within the next couple of slides. They kind of bumped uh, Sabonis down. Um, Sabonis is 47th in nine cat leagues right now. Uh, he was 21st last year. Um, Again, not anything like that he's doing particularly bad. Uh, you still know exactly what you're going to get from him. The free throw percentage isn't great, but solid points, rebounds, assists, sky-high field goal percentage. Um, playing really well for the Kings. There's a reason that they're that as good as they are, and it was it's the Sabonis-Fox pairing, um, along with the other guys they have on that team. Sabonis is uh, halfway to 28 and he's going to be able to play for a really long time uh, just because of the lack of, I guess, athleticism that's required. Like, he's going to age grace, gracefully. 
Um, so yeah, nothing too elaborate to say about Sabonis. He's very solid. I just think that there's younger guys that have played better. Uh, 29th, Lowry Markkinen uh, dropped four spots, um, which really, again, kind of similar boat. Um, other guys that I just kind of like more um, or that I like their upside more. Uh, Markkinen is 14th again this year uh, after, what was his finish last year? 19th, um, which, you know, he's almost 27 or halfway to 27. Uh, a guy that w- broke out last season for the Jazz in his first season with the team and has been as good as he was to start last season to start this season. And a lot of the reasoning, if you're just looking at the numbers, uh, for his slight bump in ranking, uh, the steals are up to 1.1. Is that sustainable? We'll see. Um, but when he's on the floor, he's really freaking good for fantasy. Top 30 assets, totally fine, uh, which is where I have him. He did drop a few spots, which, like Sabonis, just some other guys that have kind of broken out that are now ahead of him for me. Uh, this is, I mean, he's playing at his peak right now. We'll see if as they kind of acquire more lottery talent and the lottery talent they have plays more, gets better. Uh, you know, Keontae George has been great. Uh, Taylor Hendricks is starting to see minutes now. They're talking about trading John Collins. Um, so we'll monitor what marketing looks like uh, as the team evolves. Uh, hopefully he can stay healthy. I mean, that hasn't, he missed a good bit of games like late last season, which was kind of them pulling the plug in the season. He's already missed a handful this year. Um, really like the talent. We'll just kind of see what happens. Is is he playing his best basketball just because Utah doesn't have uh, their future figured out yet? And is that going to get better when they add more talent or is it going to kind of drop off when there's more scoring options? We'll see. Um, but I do really like Markkinen. Um, again, he didn't drop off very far, just dropped off a little bit, uh, mostly because of other guys bumping up. Uh, 28, this cat. Carl Anthony Towns, who dropped six spots, um, had him as a second rounder, um, which, you know, he's been good this year. Uh, His nine cat ranking is 31st, which is better than 39th last year. Obviously, he's actually healthy now. Um, The rebounds are better than last year. The points are better than last year. Field goal percentage is better than last year. But it it's kind of seeming like, okay, so like last year it was, oh, he's injured for most of the season. Uh, That's kind of why his production wasn't as good. I mean, he was a first rounder in every other season of his career from as I'm double checking this uh, before last season. And then obviously adding in Rudy Gobert kind of expected to drop a little bit, still a really fun, really good, like I'd say elite talent, uh, but having Gobert there and then being the, I think the number one team in the West right now, um, it's not moving the needle for me to, for me to say, okay, like we know he's a first round talent, but Gobert's there, which is limiting him. Like he's got to be ranked higher. Like there's a chance, I mean, with how well this is going, that this is their front court for the next three seasons at least. And then at that point, Cat's on the wrong side of 30. I feel comfortable having him as like around like 28th, which is where he is considering that in the two seasons with Gobert, he hasn't been in the top 30 in nine cap value, which, you know, it's a, a relative ranking. It's not any sort of absolute, just taking the numbers and showing how effective they've been in each individual category. But, you know, like he's not going to get you a ton of defensive stats. The blocks are down because Gobert is there. Like he was able to get you a block per game before that. Big reason for the drop. But, you know, not going to get you steals. Turnovers are pretty bad for a center. So little things impact that, but you're not going to get many centers that shoot as well as Cat. So, is the nine cat ranking exactly how he should be valued? No, but I feel better having him here than earlier, just be like top 15 or anywhere like that, just because he's done that in the past, um, just because of how their situation is now. Like this is their reality because of how good they are. So barring something changing, I think this is fair. Uh, Desmond Bain bumped up two spots to 27. He has been phenomenal. Uh, to start this season, 
25th currently in nine cat leagues, uh, averaging a bunch of career highs. Obviously, having John or John Morant uh, out of the lineup has allowed for Desmond Bain to take on a larger role. And I think that's what kind of a lot of people expected. He, but he was a third round value the last two seasons, uh, finished exactly 36th according to Basketball Monster. He's 25th right now. We'll see how the production changes uh, when John Morant returns because it's, you know, upticks, but it's not massive. He hasn't taken massive leaps. Like he's averaging an extra assist. He's averaging three extra shot attempts, three extra points. Like it's not dramatic leaps forward. So are these things that he can continue to do when Jaws back? Sure. Like he's 25, halfway to 26, kind of uh, came in the league as an older rookie after multiple seasons at TCU. Um, I, this is, it's very possible. This is just kind of his reality now, like top 25 or close to top 25, excuse me, close to top 25 value, uh, which is what we've gotten the past two years. And now it's just a little bit better. So that's why he's kind of jumped up a little bit for me. Um, Definitely something to monitor with, I believe they only played two more games without jaw. So seeing how he does um, on Tuesday against in, against the Pelicans, which I think is the first game Jaws back, Thursday against the Pacers, and Saturday against Atlanta of next week, um, those first three games with Jaws back as they get kind of reacclimated to playing with Morant will be interesting to see, although it will obviously get better as they play more games. Uh, Scoot dropped six spots for me to 26. Um, still unbelievable talent. I really like... Um, him as a talent and what he's kind of done the past couple of games. He had uh, last night, he had 23 points, 10 assists, both career highs. A lot of that came in garbage time, uh, but he made the score. The loss looked less bad because they were down 30 in the third quarter. And then he got it to be an eight point loss along with the help of some other guys. Um, he's not a great shooter. Like that's not his strength, um, but he's hit, like we're just looking at the past week, 1.7 threes during that stretch, but the field goal percentage is bad. The turnovers are bad. Those things are what guards just struggle with in general. So the assists are going up. The rebounds are trending up. The points are trending up as he plays more games, plays point guard in the NBA more, the field goal percentage and turnovers will improve or just the field goal percentage will improve and the turnover turnovers will still be there, but he'll get more assists. So, no big deal either way. Um, that's what we expect from high volume point guards. Unbelievable talent that hasn't just dominated from game one, uh, which a couple other rookies have been very good early on. That hasn't been the case for him, um, but he's starting to get there. He's starting. He's starting to improve. Um, it wouldn't be shocking to me if within the next month or so he's really coming along, and we're looking at him as like a not a silly season hero, but the final three months, like a league winner because he got dropped in a lot of leagues because it, I mean, he's, he's sitting outside the top 400 in nine cat leagues. And if you think about that, there's 30 NBA teams. He's 426th right now, which would make him about the 14th best player on average um, on any team in the league in nine cat value, uh, which is not ideal, not ideal, but he's getting better. Um, I still believe in him long term. So next, twenty five through twenty one, we have Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, Darren Fox, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Alperin Shengun. Uh, Paolo Bancaro dropped four spots for me. I really, really liked him after his rookie season, one rookie of the year. Obviously, um, this year the field goal percentage has been better, uh, which you know it was really, really bad for a six foot ten forward as a rookie. But the points haven't really jumped up at all. The rebounds haven't jumped up at all. The assists have been up about one per game. The free throw percentage has actually been worse. Like, I still really like his talent. He's a top 25 guy. Um, but it's hard for me to rank him much higher than that, knowing that he's kind of going to always be a detriment to your free throw percentage. Like, If you look at a guy like Giannis and how much he's had to do in other categories to make up for how bad his free throw percentage is, can Paolo be a guy that can contribute in enough other categories that he makes up for a poor free throw percentage or is just able to improve his free throw shooting? Um, 
how much does that help? We'll see. Um, but I think he does have a good bit of improvements to make. And I think it's also, you look at guys like Trey Young and Luka Doncic, who were really good as rookies and then just had crazy numbers in year two. And now we want to expect that from a lot of second year guys, even after they win rookie of the year, that they just are leaps and bounds better the next year. doesn't always happen. Um, I mean, if we look at it, John Morant uh, was his numbers were fairly similar to his rookie season in year two year three. He finally had his breakout and he won uh, most improved, which I, I don't want to be a, uh, someone that has a rant about the most improved player award and like what it is and what it's become, but I'm not as much of a fan as I used to be. Um, but I'm not going to make that a, a rant. I'm just going to say not as much of a fan. Uh, Paolo hasn't, really improved much, but I think he will next year. That'll probably help his uh, dynasty rank move up for me, but I can't do it when he's only contributing in a couple, couple categories um, and he's a detriment in others. Kind of hard for me to bump him up any more than that. Next one's Franz Wagner, um, which is probably I'm higher on Franz than maybe other people have him ranked. I haven't really checked out many other dynasty rankings to see exactly where they have Franz ranked as of now. Uh, but I think he's taken a step forward this year. He had a nice uh, stretch of, I think 30 point games, like a nice streak of them, but uh, kind of improved value across the board, higher usage, more shot attempts, which is I think kind of what we wanted to see. We wanted to see Franz play more aggressively. He's done that. Uh, he's currently 63rd according to basketball monster and nine cap value, but He's had stretches where he's been significantly better than that. Um, if we can see that level of play consistently from him, like he's only going to be better than this ranking. Uh, he did take a big leap up for me this season because I had him 46th heading into the year. Now I have him at 24th. It's 22 spot increase, which is the second largest among the top 30, which we'll get to the other guy. Um, I believe in our next slide, um, but I, I mean, I only see him getting better from here and he's already shown a lot of improvement this year. He's an incredible finisher, uh, willing passer, willing playmaker, especially for a guy at six ten. They have two f- six foot 10 playmakers, which is dangerous. The match are going to be very good for a very long time. Um, and it's because of Franz and Paolo. I just ha- give Franz a slight edge, uh, which is why I haven't ranked one spot above. Uh, 23rd, De'Aaron Fox leaped up 14 spots for me. Uh, Fox was awesome last season, took a massive uh, leap for fantasy and had the best fantasy season of his career and then helped the Kings end their playoff drought. And it was kind of like, oh, well, okay, great. He was awesome. How much better can he get? Well, let me tell you, he has been better this year. He's third round value, uh, career highs and points. Uh, and threes, which is the main difference. Like he's averaging 30.1 points, 3.2 threes. I believe his previous career high for threes was 1.8, and his previous career high for points was 25.2. Uh, the assists are still solid, still solid. The steals are still solid. Free throw percentage is a bit down after shooting 78% last year, so hopefully that's something that we can improve a little bit. Um, at least a couple percentage points will help. Uh, because 73% isn't ideal for a star point guard. It's actually pretty bad in comparison to some other point guards that are uh, as good as he is. So the field goal percentage has also been down. That's a direct result of him shooting threes. No big deal. Um, But yeah, I mean, you're getting 30 points, six and a half assists and three threes. There's only a handful of players in the NBA that can do that. Um, I want to say it's like probably Luca. Trey Young, I mean, we're talking 30 points, so that might be it that are still doing that. Let me, you know what, now that I'm saying that, I don't want to make, make, I want to make sure I'm not forgetting a name, but if we're just looking at the leading scores, the ones that are also have really big assists and three numbers, yeah, it's, I mean, Steph was able to do it in his prime. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, I guess, kind of not quite as many assists. Devin Booker, not quite as many threes. Uh, Tyrese Maxey. Okay. Tyrese Maxey's a guy I forgot. And uh, 
but the points are only 26. Same thing with Tyrese Halliburton. So, yeah, a lot of that you're not getting 30 points. I mean, among people that are averaging at least 30 points per game, Darren Fox is second in threes to Luka Doncic. So Trey Young is averaging 27 points. So I guess it's not that far off from – or that much better than Max or Halliburton. But obviously Trey's assists are better than uh, than Max. So, yeah, maybe Tyrese Halliburton. I'll put Tyrese Halliburton in that conversation as well, though the assists are significantly higher, um, which I – I just forget that uh, Halliburton is averaging freaking 26 points per game this year because, I mean, what was it, 20 last year? 20.7 last year and just took another step forward. It's just in my mind that he's a uh, 20 and 10 guy, not a 25 and 10 guy. So that's been great. We'll talk more about him later. But yeah, De'Aaron Fox has been awesome. Um, And can he take another step? I don't know. But where he's at now is enough for me to have him 23rd. Jaron Jackson Jr. took a step back for me, uh, dropped seven spots. Blocks haven't been there this year uh, with John Moran suspended. Hopefully he can get back to that when Ja is back in the lineup because he can focus a little bit more on defense. But he had, had I think he has, excuse me, let me just confirm this, two straight 40-point games. Yeah, two straight um, and losses. So he won't score that much that often, uh, but hopefully the blocks will start to come back when Jaws back in the lineup, but the blocks really inflated his value last year. He was a first rounder uh, with three blocks per game. I think I had him higher because of just how valuable the shot blocking is uh, because of how few shot blockers there were last year. Now there's more shot blockers. I think Victor Wembanyama is leading the league at three currently, um, which is about what, but excuse me, Jaron Jackson averaged three last year. Um, he's averaging 1.8 this year. Can he get back to close to three? Maybe. Uh, but for me, he if he was a better rebounder, I think that he would be able to be a little higher. But aside from the blocks and decent threes for a big, his, he's not elite in any other category. Like The points are good. He's averaging career high right now. That'll probably come down when John Moran returns. But not great in any other category, but versatile. So I have no problem having him at 22. Uh, but that is why he's kind of dropped is I think just more of an understanding from me as to what, you know, three blocks per game and leading the league by a mile uh, did for his nine cap value. Uh, the last one just outside the top 20 uh, is Alperin Shangun, who rose 20 spots or jumped up 20 spots for me. Um, I think I really liked his talent in the past. But in my mind, bringing in Ime Udoka wasn't going to help him. I didn't think that he was going to fit what Udoka wants to do. I was like, okay, cool. They have Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, T- Tari Easton, Jabari Smith. Maybe they'll just, you know, use this younger athletic lineup. I mean, I guess Fred Van Vliet isn't that young, but an athletic lineup. Uh, Jalen Green, Tari Eason, get out and run. Tari Eason, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith, elite defenders. So what does that look like? Probably fits better with Yudoka. That was my mind, or what was in my mind. I didn't think Shangun was going to have a great year. He has been awesome. He is, one, fit in just fine. I He did get benched the other night when he didn't have anything. Like He just was struggling offensively. Uh, Yudoka is a good coach. Like He's going to do those things to try and win games. Um, even if a lot of other coaches would be scared to bench their best player or best players, any of them. He's done it a handful of times with Jalen Green, who I am i was never super high on, but I might even be lower on now. But no, Shingun's been awesome. The points and rebounds and, I mean, excuse me, rebounds have gone up 0.1, but the points career high, assists career high. Um, yeah, he's been phenomenal. Love his talent, like, Call him Baby Jokic for a reason. Going to be starring for Houston for a long time. Yeah, not much more to say. He's been he's been much better than I expected him to be this season, uh, which is why I have him jumping up so much. Because before it was the the situation is limiting his value, and now the situation is isn't hindering his value at all for me. And I like his talent even more now that he's uh, seemed to be not reaching his peak, but like reaching elite or borderline elite value. 
and he's doing it. It's not like, oh, he has this upside, he's flashing. Like, he's doing the thing. So that's why I have him there. Uh, 20th, I have Tyrese Maxey, 19th, Anthony Davis, then Darius Garland, Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell. So Tyrese Maxey was the big, big jump that I had referenced previously. Uh, jumped up 29 spots uh, from 49th to 20th, which I don't think that's super surprising uh, that – he made the leap, and I think 20th may still be low in comparison to what you see from other rankings. Uh, averaging a bunch of career highs this year, 26.1 points, 4.1 rebounds, 6.8 assists, 3.2 threes, playing 37.5 minutes per game. Uh, free throw percentage is 89.5. Still only turning it over 1.4 times per game, which, I don't know, maybe I'm a nerd about that, but having the bump in assists and usage and the turnovers only being 0.1 higher than last season is the most impressive thing to me. A lot of guys, it's you put them in this high volume role and all of a sudden, sure, the numbers get inflated, but the turnovers are right along with them. I think that's kind of what the Jordan Poole expectation was, was 20 points, six assists and four and a half turnovers. Uh, But that hasn't happened for Tyrese Maxey this year. So that's been exciting for him. Um, and his talent, fantasy managers that have him rostered. I had a uh, podcast episode. I don't remember if it was – I think it was just before the season started about guys to try and uh, acquire before the season began, um, and I talked about trading for Tyrese Maxey because James Harden was going to be there and his numbers are going to be inflated, um, but then that when they eventually traded James Harden for someone else to come in and handle the ball or take away shots, that Maxey's value would drop. That's what I said. Um, so to buy now and sell on a, like around or buy the beginning of the season before the season started and sell like probably like around right now, maybe in January. Don't sell. Like if you bought, phenomenal. Keep them. Like they traded James Harden for scraps, not scraps, but no guards. That's the main thing. No guards. Could they still make a deadline deal that brings in a Zach Levine or a DeMar DeRozan? Maybe. I wouldn't rule them out, but Tyrese Maxey has been awesome. Um, and I don't think that they're going to acquire a point guard. That was the issue with James Harden is Maxey was really good. And then they brought in James Harden and he had the ball in his hands because he's the point guard. Now Tyrese Maxey's the point guard and anybody they bring in is going to be a shooting guard or small forward or power forward. So not going to impact him. He's going to be great. The numbers have been phenomenal. Yes. It's a result of a, a, higher usage role and extra minutes, but that's also partially the Nick nurse effect. Like he's going to play his starters large amounts of minutes, like big, big minutes. That's what he did in Toronto. That's what he's doing here. Um, as long as Tyrese Maxey's healthy, he's probably gonna be playing pretty big minutes. He's averaging 37 and a half minutes per game this season. Um, you know, he's allowed to have off games here and there, which he has had, but I'm, I'm comfortable having him here because I think that this is, this is right now his this season is his peak. I don't think not that he this is the best basketball he's ever gonna play, but I think as far as his his value, he's not gonna have another like he's he's been a first rounder so far. I'm not confident that he stays there. I don't think that he's ever gonna be like a first round guy. But I have him top twenty, so I'm, I still really like him. But the other guys that are ahead of him, I just like more. They've either already done the thing or they haven't been able to do the thing which is fit like provide first round value, but it's because of their situation and that situation could be coming. Um, this is in my mind, the best we're going to see Maxi play uh, as far as his stats. So that's why I have him just probably a few spots below other people. Anthony Davis. I had him 19th last time. I have him 19th again, this time um, health still scares me, but he hasn't, hardly missed any games this year. I think he, I want to say he's missed just one. Um, and he's been at fourth according to basketball monster, uh, in nine cap value. He's played 24 games so far this season. And let me, excuse me. Has he not missed a game? Maybe he hasn't missed a game. No, he's, he's missed one game. I know he's missed one game. Yeah. Okay. He missed one game. I remember that. I remember that. Um, so I don't know where the disconnect there is on that. Maybe, huh? No, okay. So it was that they played 25 games now as a team. NBA.com wasn't updated from that from the last time I refreshed it. 
cool, we're good. Anthony Davis has missed one game. Um, health still scares me, but he has been healthy this year. So I have to give him credit for that. Um, but he's also almost 31. Still an incredible player for fantasy basketball. Not many guys that can give points, rebounds, like steals and blocks like him. Um, he's averaging 2.6 blocks per game, which is his highest since uh, joining the Lakers. 12 and a half rebounds is the same as last season. Uh, 23.9 is his second highest since joining the Lakers to last season, which last season he was awesome when he was on the floor, but he just kind of missed some games. Excuse me, his first season with the Lakers when they won the championship was actually his highest points per game, 26.1. Um, so, yeah, he's been awesome. Hopefully he can stay healthy. The talent is just too good to have any lower than this. Um, however, like if he stays healthy, he's going to be better than a borderline top 20 uh, dynasty player. Like He will be better than that, but – because of his injury history and the fact that he's questionable questionable before every game and heads to the locker room a lot. And like, there's always kind of that risk. I can't rank him too much higher than this. Uh, Darius Garland has dropped two spots for me. You know, he's been not great this year. Like he hasn't been that, he hasn't been that good. He, uh, career high in turnovers, the points and assists are down again from last season. Uh, expected the numbers to drop when Donovan Mitchell came, but I didn't expect it to drop again in year two. So he just hasn't been quite as good, but there's always the rumors of Donovan Mitchell uh, ending up with a different team. And while that hasn't happened, obviously yet, uh, if things go bad for Cleveland again, maybe that could uh... shoot. I'm just reading the uh, Evan Mobley update, which we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but that's devastating. Anyways, uh, so Darius Garland dropped two spots for me. Uh, when event, I don't think Donovan Mitchell is going to retire as a Cav, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's gone within the next couple of seasons. Uh, the Knicks and Nets are both rumored teams. It could be any number of teams, uh, especially if you know they lose in the first round again. So Darius Garland will have an opportunity at that point to have the ball in his hands more and just play better. And he's already starting. His play has been better over the past couple weeks, more efficient with the ball, uh, points going up a little bit, but he's not going to be able to truly give you the elite value that he's capable of as long as Donovan Mitchell's there. Uh, so that's why he dropped two spots for me. Just hasn't been quite as good this year, but we know why, so we're not too worried. Uh, Devin Booker, same spot for me, um, bringing in Bradley Beal to play alongside him, and, and KD hasn't hindered him at all. He's been a first-rounder this year. Um there's only been one game with all three of them, obviously, but Book was still awesome. Had 34 points, six rebounds, 12 assists. Um, he's 27 right in his prime, so a few good years left. Not, excuse me, not a few good years left, but like a few elite seasons. He's right in his prime. This is also the best fantasy season of his career. The assists have gone back up. Um, there were, I guess, reports that Bradley Beal would be the point guard. And obviously, maybe as they play more games, that'll happen. But Devin Booker's been an awesome point guard so far. So there's no reason for them to change that. So I think that's good for Book, bad for Beal, because now he's the third scoring option and he's not the point guard. So not great. Um, but Devin Booker, career high 8.3 assists, career high 6.1 rebounds, career high 28.1 points. Will the points kind of drop as they play more games with him and K KD and Beal, maybe. Um, but the assists were really good before Chris Paul got there. And now they've gone back up, but even more up. So really excited about what Book's doing. Uh, but this is his best basketball in my mind. Um, so we'll see if, if something changes as they play more games. Donovan Mitchell, 16th, bumped up two spots for me. I didn't think that he would be better heading from Utah to Cleveland. And I didn't think he'd be better in a second year in Cleveland. He's taken another step forward. Uh, more assists than last season, more rebounds than last season, uh, more steals than last season. So the nine cap value really kind of reflects from these minor improvements in the categories that he's, that aren't like really a strong suit aside from the steals. He averaged one and a half steals in each of the previous two seasons. He's averaging 1.9 right now. Uh, which is his career high kind of by far. 
His previous career high was 1.5, which he did three times. So, yeah, he's been really good. He's taking another leap forward. Um, whether he stays in Cleveland or ends up somewhere else, he's going to be really freaking good. All right, next is Evan Mobley, who dropped two spots for me. But since we're on the topic, actually, I need to mention Darius Garland fractured his jaw and is expected to miss several weeks. Um, th- that happened before I started recording this. And then while I'm recording this, Evan Mobley, uh, has been, it's been announced that he will undergo arthroscopic surgery on his left knee and is expected to miss six to eight weeks, which stinks. That has him out until late January, early February. So shortly before the trade deadline, the Cavs will get healthy uh, with Mobley back, who has been 39th so far this season in nine cap value, best season of his career, averaging a double-double first time in his career. It, he's improving, and he had some really good games uh, with Jared Allen out and then had some really good games even with Jared Allen playing. So still love his talent, love his upside, but a six- to eight-week absence kind of stinks, obviously. Um, Dean Wade should start in his place. Dean Wade hasn't done anything for fantasy. Don't worry about it. Jared Allen hasn't been better because Evan Robley's out. Maybe he will be in a longer-term absence. Tristan Thompson's been pretty good off the bench. I don't know if he's a guy that I'm going to add, but he's a, he's played well. So that's exciting. Uh, but yeah, Evan probably dropped a little bit just because I think he, he didn't, he hasn't taken the leap forward that I was hoping for him to. Um, but I think a lot of that is just going to be, he's not going to be able to do that as long as um, Jared Allen is there. And I think uh, I had him pretty high, and I've just been slowly kind of bumping him down as other guys are taking leaps forward that Mobley hasn't been able to yet. Uh, the next one of those guys that has is Scotty Barnes, who jumped up nine spots for me. He's been 11th in nine cap value this season, um, averaging 20.1 points, 9.1 rebounds, 5.6 assists, 1.7 steals, 1.2 blocks, 2.1 threes. All of those are career highs for him. He's been phenomenal, uh, you know, not necessarily point Scotty, but he's done a little bit more playmaking since Fred Van Vliet left. He's been awesome. He had a really good rookie year, took a step back, not a step back, but wasn't quite as good in his second year, um, and has taken a big leap forward in year three. Um, first round guy with a fanny, fantasy, <laughs> fantasy friendly skill set. Um, that should keep him around here where he is now for a really long time, uh, which is why I have him 14th here. Um, he's not as good right now as some of the guys ahead of him. And he doesn't have quite the upside as some other guys ahead of him, but I think the combination uh, kind of keeps him where he's at for me. Um, so yeah, just outside of, of a first rounder in a dynasty league, but you could easily make an argument that he should be higher. How much better can he get? We'll see. Uh, but well-rounded game right now. Free throws aren't great, but not truly bad anywhere. Um, and very good in a handful of categories. So, uh, Chet Holmgren, uh, as a rookie, excuse me, his first season in the league, I think it's totally fine to call him a rookie. Just wanted to clarify that I understand that he had a year to train with the Thunder uh, before playing. Great. Okay. Uh, 13th and nine cap value. His first season in the NBA. 16.9 points, eight rebounds, two and a half blocks, one and a half threes. Yeah, he's going to be really good for a long time. Um, he's only going to get better as he plays more games. And not saying as he bulks up, because he's not ever going to be just some stocky guy. Uh, like that lean muscle and length will help him be. Um, everything that he needs to be for fantasy and for the Thunder. like That's kind of a strength for him is not being super muscular. Anyways, he doesn't need to put on pounds to survive in the NBA as he's shown. Oh, no, he can't stop Giannis, Sergio Joel Embiid coming down the lane. Okay, nobody can. Great. One of the best shot blockers in the league is a rookie, um, which actually, let me just, Double check this. He is fifth currently behind Brooke Lopez, Victor Wembanyama, Walker Kessler, and Anthony Davis, uh, which we'll, we'll get to Wemby later on. Spoiler, he is in the top 10. Um, but yeah, Chet's 
going to kind of get better and rise up this list. I wouldn't be upset if anybody had him higher than this at all, just because this is actually where his nine cap value is as a rookie. I just like the upside of some other guys a little bit more. That's why he's not quite ranked as high as he is, but it also just kind of shows just how freaking good uh, basketball is being played right now. Like a lot of just elite, elite players that are very young. It's a bit of a changing of the guard. Um, There's been a lot of people saying, maybe not a lot of people, but some people saying that when uh, LeBron retires that the NBA won't have a face of the franchise. And I just said, we will talk about Victor Wembanyama in a minute. But there are a number of other guys that are playing incredibly well that you can look at as as well. Um, so there is no shortage of talent in the NBA. Um, one of the best players in the NBA is Giannis, who I have at 12th, which is exactly where I had him last time. Uh, he is currently 20th in 9-cap value. Last season, he was 104th. The season before that, he was 10th. There was a massive freakout about Giannis being ranked outside the top 100. And... It was like, great, cool, punt free throw percentage. If you punt free throw percentage with Giannis, you have a good chance to win um, six other categories. Threes, he's not really going to help you. Turnovers, he's not going to help you. But points, he's averaging 32 points, 10.9 rebounds, five assists, one and a half steals, and 1.3 blocks while shooting 62.2% from the floor. In a nine-category league, you need to win five categories to win, and he's dominating six. He fits in great. Uh, with specific builds, but even then, he has been 20th in 9-cap value despite shooting 67.7% from the free throw line on 11.3 attempts per game. It's better than last season, 64.5% on 12.3 attempts. However, he's also shooting 7% better from the field, and he's been able to focus more on defense with Damian Lillard there, and the steals and blocks are back up. The steals and blocks dropping are what really killed his value last season. He's always been dominant in fantasy basketball. The free throw percentage is still bad, but he's he's going to be a top 20 guy despite the poor f- shooting percentage but for, from the line. But over the past two weeks, now granted this is partially because he had a 64-point game, but he is third in nine-cap value while shooting 74% from the line on 15.4 attempts per game. If he can shoot that consistently while still doing what he was doing in other categories, yeah, he's going to be a top five player in nine cat scoring. So, yes, the free throws hinder him, but he's still really freaking good. So, 12th because he's 29 and he's probably not going to age very gracefully, but he's one of the best players in fantasy basketball right now. If you draft him, go win now. You'll have a chance to win your league. Same thing with Joel Embiid, who I actually ended up dropping a spot. Um, he's currently second in nine cap value uh, after being second last year and third the year before. He's been arguably even better this season than he was last year uh, in terms of just playing basketball when he won the MVP. And he's still going to continue to dominate in fantasy. Puts up numbers in every category. Excuse me, numbers in every category. Turnovers are bad, for, especially for a center, but. Gives you 1.13s per game this season and is still very good in seven other categories. So, yeah, I mean, the main argument against him is that he's almost 30. So, I mean, there's other guys that are ahead of him that are playing just as good or maybe not or almost as good that are significantly younger. And that's the reason that he's 11th and not much higher. 10th is Cade Cunningham, who I dropped a spot. Looks awesome his first game or two um and it's still been really good uh for the most part obviously the efficiency hasn't been great he's currently 141st i want to say one wow i'm tired um but shooting 42 percent from the field and turning it over 4.1 times per game just like every other young guard those things will improve as he plays more games he's Averaging 22 points, four rebounds, 7.3 assists, two threes, 0.9 steals. Like a nice, well rounded game. Doesn't have many weaknesses in what he can do. He's just been inefficient about doing it. He's only going to get better. um, And he's still incredibly young, which is the main reason he's where he's at. He's 22. Um, So, like I said, only going to get better. Uh, The nine cap value will get better. 
I think I have less faith in ranking him in the top 10 as I did previously. Like I used to love, love, love Kate Cunningham for his couple of years in the league. And that first year before he came into the league, um, not quite as optimistic as I was, but I still like the talent way too much from a six, seven point guard uh, to rank him any lower than this. Trey young. I bumped up two spots. Um, I think I was finally honest with myself and cause I was, I tried to rank Trey a little bit lower because I'm a Hawks fan and I don't want to be too biased in my rankings, but honestly, like I would draft Trey young here um, above the other guys that he's right in front of simply because he's 25. So he's got plenty of time left um, averaging 27.2 points, 10.8 assists, career high, 1.4 steals, the three pointers are back up. He's averaging three per game. Field goal percentage is bad, um, but it's been better recently. He started off really poor, uh, from the field and has progressively improved. Um, the turnovers obviously are bad. They're never going to be good. Just warning you now. Um, but that's okay. Um, there, like I said earlier, there aren't many guards that can average 20 or many players that can average 25 and 10. Um, and he still gives you threes and he's given you 1.4 steals per game. He's been active defensively. Um, which was never really the case previously. So it's great to see him doing that. Yeah, there's two guards, aver- two players averaging 10 assists. Um, Trey Young, Tyrese Halliburton. Trey is, is averaging an extra point. Tyrese Halliburton is averaging almost an extra three. Uh, Trey's averaging more steals. Tyrese Halliburton has been more efficient. Uh, field goal percentage is significantly better. Turnovers are significantly better. That's why he's ranked higher than Trey. But there aren't many players that can give you that kind of production. If you drop it to nine assists, you add in Jokic and Luka, who, again, if you're able to see this slideshow, you notice that the other three players are absent from this, and I can promise you it's not because they're outside the top 30. Um, So I've spoiled four out of my top five so far. Great. Um, It shouldn't be too disappointing, but there aren't many players with this unique skill set, which is why they're so valuable. Um, Trey and, and... like, I mean, honestly, it's really the, these four, Tyrese Halliburton, Trey Young, Jokic, and, and Luka that are the dominant assist guys in the NBA. Like, fifth in the league is Fred Van Vliet, and then it goes Devin Booker, LaMelo Ball, like guys that have consistently given you solid assist numbers, but nobody else is giving you 15 assists, and you think, wow, like that's not – or like that's – and you're not thinking, wow, that's insane. It's the best he's ever going to do. Like these guys do that fairly regularly where they can just kind of do that just kind of have 15 assists and still give you a bunch of buckets so those four are very unique um trey does it less efficiently kind of why i have him a little bit lower but that's okay anthony edwards um had him eight last time have him eighth again he hasn't had like this breakout season that i think we're all hoping for but he's still been really good uh the nine cat value is down because his field goal percentage is actually down from the last two years. Um, his free throw percentage has improved, which was a big knock on him on his value previously. Um, the points are a little bit down, which again, he's hitting more shots and shooting at a higher percentage and the points are going to go up. So once he starts hitting shots, I think the value nine cat value is going to rise, but man, there aren't many players that can give you, like value like this across the board from the shooting guard position with a ton of points, like very, very special talent gives you uh steals, but also has the ability to get you blocks. Hopefully he can get to a point where he's averaging a block per game, uh, but just a very special, special talent that is only going to continue to get better. He's only 22 years old. Excited to see uh, how much better he can get. Uh, Jason Tatum, I dropped from six to seven. Um, he hasn't been quite as good this year. Um, I think a little bit of statistical change for him uh, with Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and Drew Holiday kind of in the mix now. Points are down. Assists are down. Usage is down. Shot attempts are down. Free throw percentage is a little bit down. So things that are entirely situational dependent for him, but I think – the mainly the reason he dropped a spot is because other guys have been significantly better this year as in comparison to last year, whereas Tatum has actually been a little bit worse, but he's still only, he's almost 26. He is going to continue to be one of the best players in the league for a really long time. 
Um, and nine cap value is a little bit down, but I don't think it's anything that's concerning. It's not going to be the norm for him. I think whether Boston has this kind of super team around him or slightly less talent, Tatum is still going to be able to get his pretty consistently. Um, so not too worried about him. Going to be really good for a long time. LaMelo is sixth. Um, man, hopefully he can stay healthy. It hasn't been – he's it's he's missed the last handful of games. Um, could you call him injury prone? Like he's su- He suffered a lot of ankle injuries last year. I think three long-term absences, and now he has one this year. Hopefully he can stay healthy because when he's on the floor, the numbers are crazy. Uh points, which is career high. Uh, Three and a half threes, 5.5 rebounds, 8.2 assists, 1.4 steals. The field goal percentage isn't great, but he's kind of like, like similar to Trey, except you're getting more rebounds and more threes, slightly less assists. Um, So I think just the way it evens out when, when LaMelo is going to be playing at his best and healthy, the numbers are going to be scary. Still only 22, um, so, yeah, when he gets back from his injury, which Charlotte's horrible about clarity with that, um, I think those numbers only rise. I Me, mean, he's been he's thirty third right now, nine cat uh, per basketball monster was thirtieth last year, twenty first the year before. So, not too worried about that. Um, he has like top five upside, so it's uh, it's coming. He's hopefully can uh, stay healthy for you know at least most of the season or like a long stretch of time but uh top five uh, i'm gonna go ahead and get into it so i have Jokic at five luca at four tyrese halliburton at three sga at two Wemby at one this is probably the lowest you'll see Jokic ranked um i had him first before this season and obviously he hasn't been bad this year he's currently fifth in nine cap value which he's been first the past three seasons but to me, he's still going to continue to be in the top five for at least the next handful of seasons, like potentially five seasons. But the the reason that I had that I bumped him down is the fact that you know SGA is currently first, Tyrese Halliburton is currently third, and Luca is currently sixth, whereas Jokic is fifth, so right around the same range. And they're all at least, I think, so. Luca is 24, so he's four years younger. Tyrese Halliburton is 23, so he's five years younger. SGA, I think, is 20, or so he's 25, so he's three or four years younger. So it's that age difference. You know, you're getting similar production, or not similar production, but similar value um, from guys that are younger. So why would we not take that? And then obviously, Wemby at, at one. Um, I think it was it was something that was had been on my mind for a few weeks of what I rank Wemby at one. I don't know, but I think that he has to be the most valuable player in Dynasty Leagues. If that makes sense, it's like is Wemby the most going to be the most impactful player in fantasy basketball for the next five years or next ten years? Like could you say like definitively yes? Like maybe not. But I think his upside and range of outcomes, just he has to be the most valuable player. So just going through it from five, Jokic obviously hasn't been quite as, like, statistically, he's fifth instead of first. And no, that shouldn't be a massive knock on him that drops him four spots. But like I said, the other guys hopped up because they're younger and have all taken leaps. Um, he's actually averaging a career high in points per game uh, at 27.2. The field goal percentage is a little bit down. He's had some like pretty poor shooting performances recently, which is very out of character for him. Not anything that's concerning. Um, Still dominant with rebounds and assists as well. Uh, Like I said, field goal percentage is a little bit down. Free throw percentage is a little bit down. If he doesn't finish in finish first in nine cat in a nine cat scoring format league ever again, like that's okay pretty safe to say he's going to be at worst top 10 for at least the next five years can easily see much higher than that um yeah and he's still one of the best he is arguably the best player in the league i'm sure it's still an argument uh people have different opinions i'd still say he is 
Um, but other people have kind of caught up to just how dominant he's been, and there's nothing wrong with that. Still one of the best players in fantasy basketball, but trying to view with a wider lens of the next five, even ten years, a little bit lower than these other guys. Luca, I dropped two spots despite him actually uh, being in the top. Like he's having the first first round finish of his career as of now. Free throw percentage is finally evened out. Like it's actually happening. The points, rebounds, assists, and threes are dominant. The turnovers aren't great. The steals are good. Um, but to me, it's less, okay, Luka dropped two spots, and it's more, okay, I had Luka too high previously, and I think four is more accurate. Um, the skill set is obviously very unique and dominant ar- across the board. Um, but I think guys like Tyrese Halliburton and, and SGA who do it, like who put up big numbers more efficiently. I just have to give a little bit of an edge to it's interesting because you can play around on basketball monster with punting categories. And if you punt, um, actually, let me, okay. Yeah. I needed to double check it before I, I said it and then ended up being wrong. But if you punt free throw percentage and turnovers, which are Luca's two weakest categories, SGA is still better than him in nine cat leagues, despite, SGA's turnovers and free throw percentage being really good, but it's because SGA gives you the dominant steals, dominant blocks, uh, very solid rebounds and assists while still giving you 31 points per game and a high field goal percentage for a guard. Um, That's why I have SGA at two ahead of Luka. Um, SGA rose five spots for me. I didn't think that he would be not taking a massive step back, but wouldn't be as good as he has been uh, with Chet Holmgren playing and another year with Jalen Williams and Josh Giddy another year and I'm adding more talent, just all these factors. I didn't expect him to take kind of another step forward, but he has. So like great job SGA. He's been the best player in fantasy basketball at this point. Um, which is why I have him at two. Tyrese Halliburton also obviously has taken a big or like just another step forward this year. We'll call it a big step forward. I'll call it a big step. He's averaging 26.1 points. Uh, previous career high was last year at 20.7. 3.83's previous career high was last year 2.9. 12 assists. Last year was 10.4. Um, shooting over 50% for the field for the first time in his career, all while still averaging two and a half turnovers per game. So he's third right now uh, in nine cat leagues. Uh, and he's third in my rankings. I think that there's a chance that he is top three or at least top five for like the next decade, right along there with SGA, which is why the those guys are right where I have them. Um, it's kind of hard to put into words how good all these guys have been and make it in a smooth way that explains my point of why they're ranked where they are. This top five is a pretty clear top five to me. I know I was big on, okay, before the season, there's a, a top one. It's Jokic top two and like top three, excuse me, with Wemby and Luka included, top seven that included SGA, Halliburton, Tatum, and LaMelo. And then Anthony Edwards was eighth to me. And like that's kind of where you had to have them in my mind. That there wasn't much room. Like you can move around within those ranges or within those tiers, but this is a very clear top five for me. I think LaMelo and Tatum, not that they've fallen off, but they've, Halliburton SGA have kind of separated from that being like a top seven and making this a top five so much so that they've passed Luka and Jokic for me, but it's all neck and neck. I don't think you can like definitively say, or I can't even definitively say this is exactly how they should be. This is how I would have them. But if someone else says, no, I think that this person within this top five should actually be here. I'd say, okay, great. Like looking at it, um, and I've been working on these for a few days, but I think I'm trying to see how long ago. Let me pull up his rankings because Mitch Casey, I did see his because he posted his top. Okay, his top five on uh, on Twitter. And he had Wemby at one, Halliburton two, SGA three, Jokic four, Luka five. So very similar um, to what I have. Um, he was the first to have uh, Wemby at one that I've seen posted. Uh and then Dynasty Hoops, Dynasty Hoops HQ uh, had responded to his tweet saying, "I considered doing it to be the first, and I almost, I didn't respond to the tweet, which, but I thought about it in my mind. I responded. That happens ninety percent of the time, as I mentally respond to 
the tweets and texts and then just don't end up doing it. But um, saying like, yeah, I was kind of in the, the same boat of wanting to publish my dynasty rankings and have a OMB at one. Um, and I wasn't the first to do it, but I guess also it gave me a chance to see if there was going to be a lot of pushback on it. And after looking through, I didn't see any negative uh, comments of people saying, wow, I can't believe you had Wemby first. You actually didn't have anybody saying that. So great. Um, so hopefully I don't get anybody saying that either because, oh my gosh, this guy has been incredible. Uh, 24th right now in nine cat as a rookie, the seven foot five player who hasn't turned 20 yet is averaging 19.3 points, 10.7 rebounds, two and a half assists, 1.3 steals, three blocks and 1.4 threes while shooting 43.7% from the field and three and a half turnovers per game. Sure. The seven foot five guy shouldn't be shooting 43.7% from the field, but do we really think he's going to keep doing that for the rest of his career? No, I think we all know that he's going to be over 50%. The only reason it's not going to be closer to 60 is because he likes to shoot threes and he likes to shoot tough shots. And those are things that he is good at. Um, with a, if you're punting field goal percentage and turnovers, he jumps to 13th in nine cap value. Um, and let's, let's just keep this going just because I'm messing around with basketball monster. And what's his next weakest category? Assists. If we punt assists, he hops to third. So that gives you – he's not strong in, in six categories, but he's, you know, strong in a few. Um, his next weakest is threes. If we punt threes, that actually drops him down. Anyways, as I'm sitting here just toying around with Basketball Monster, I don't need to be doing that um, while recording a podcast, but it, it shows you just how good he has been as a rookie, especially for a specific build, and he's only going to get better as he plays more games. Like He's on a bad team. They have talent, but they have a bad team, and he's averaging 19.3 points. I think that it's without a doubt in my mind he will average at least 25. The rebounds will only – go up. He's only playing 30 and a half minutes per game. I think it's very realistic for him to get to 33 or 34 um, when he's more towards his prime. So yeah, I have those numbers are going to be scary looking. It's going to be so much better than a lot of what we've seen in fantasy. Cause if he's averaging three blocks per game as a rookie, could he get to closer to four? Could he get to 13 or 14 rebounds and 27, 28 points He's averaging almost a steal and a half as a rookie. Not saying those will get better, but he's been, he surprised me with how good the steals have been. Maybe an extra assist or two and an extra three or two. And the efficiency is going to improve, or at least the field goal percentage will. Maybe the free throw percentage gets a little bit better. We're talking about a guy that may finish number one in fantasy basketball in nine cat rankings for a decade. So as long as he stays healthy, which obviously is the caveat for literally everybody. Um, and continues to grow and how we expect him to, which everything narrative wise that has come out about him makes me think, yeah, he's, he's about his business. He's going to improve. He's going to get better. Um, Spurs are a great organization, a great landing spot for him to do that. Um, yeah. To, in my mind, he is worth more in fantasy basketball than any other player. Um, I had the number one pick in my tank. No, yes, it was that league in my tank me later uh, dynasty startup. And I took him first um, and I don't regret it whatsoever. I'm also tanking in that league and hopefully I can get some uh, nice lottery talent to add to him. But anyways, that's going to do it for this one. Um, I'm going to continue to work on my dynasty rankings and hopefully have those done with before the end of the year. Um, or like a good bit before that. So we can have more time to talk about it. And then in January, um, trying to get some more uh, fun guests on. I've talked to uh, a couple analysts um, about different episodes to do. I think we're going to try and do uh, more of a dynasty Q and a pretty regularly. I talked to Red Bauer about that. So that should be coming your way starting in 2024. And then also uh, talking more about, some of the rookie prospects trying to do that earlier in the year than I did last year. So that's going to do it uh, for this episode of the tank Mulator podcast. If you would be so kind as to like uh, comment, rate review, 
whatever else you can do, um, this podcast or YouTube video, wherever you're consuming it. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at no Ruben 22. Happy to answer any fantasy basketball or dynasty related questions. Uh, you just tweet at me and follow at FBI basketball on Twitter. But I think that's about the only outro things I can think of. So that's going to do it for this episode. You just listened to another episode from the Fantasy Basketball International Podcast Network. Thanks for joining us. And for more information about joining our community, please check out our website at fbibasketball.com.